Now we'll talk about log-log graphing very briefly. So log-log graphing, when you use a log scale on both x and y, that's going to, the punchline there, is that power functions are the things that end up as straight lines. And I'm uh, not having very good mark look, look on my markers. That's, so power functions, it's really important to take, make this distinction. That's where x, the variable, is in the base, and you've got a fixed exponent. So x squared, totally familiar, y equals x squared parabola, um, x to the one-third, a cube root function. Even if the power is some weird thing, as long as it's a constant, that's a power function. 2 to the x, e to the x, 10 to the x, those are exponential functions. Those don't show up as straight lines. Really quite different from semi-log graphing, because that's exactly what does show up as straight lines for semi-log graphing. So it's a really important distinction. Okay. So, um, and I don't want to talk too much about the algebra, about why that happens. We see that experimentally if we plot some graphs. It's pretty easy to see it happening. For example, y equals x squared. Um, let me see if we can see the whole scale here. So 10 to the 0, that's 1 squared is 1. 10 to the minus 1 squared is 10 to the minus 2. You can actually think about, if you actually do it all in terms of exponents, you can start seeing why this is true, because every time you raise or lower an exponent, you just go up by one, one uh, cycle of this scale. Uh, 10 to the 1 squared is 10 to the 2. Um, even if it's got a multiplier, then it's still going to work. So it's really going to be power functions like 7x squared, or 5x to the 1 3rd, or 0.3x to the 4.27. Um, so for example, y equals 100x. If you put in 1, you're going to get 100, 10 to the 2. If you put in 10 to the minus 1, sorry, it's a, kind of a big piece of paper, 10 to the minus 1, 100 times that is 10 to the 1. And every time you go over by one power of 10, x goes up by a power of 10, and the whole thing goes up by 1. Uh, one more. Here's 10 to the minus 2 times root x. So 1 goes to 10 to the minus 2. 100, square root that, you get 10, times 10 to the minus 2 is 10 to the minus 1. Um, and notice that this guy, as you go over 1, sorry, if you go over 2, you go up 1. Because every time the x gets a factor of 100, you square root that, the root x gets a factor of 10. Similarly, but kind of opposite, y equals x squared. Every time you go over one cycle this much, you go up two cycles. Because if x gets inflated by a, pack, a factor of 10, x squared gets inflated by a factor of 100. And every time you do factors in either direction in this scale, in a log-log scale, you just, it just means going over by a specified amount or up by a specified amount. And that's really why you get a straight line and why the slopes are so special. The real punchline here is that the slope, as long as you're using equal, exactly equal um, increments, physical increments for a power of 10, a factor of 10 here and a factor of 10 here, that's important. If you're doing that, the slope equals the exponent. That's awesome. Okay. Um, actually, let me just show you the algebra. Y equals, if you have Y equals AX to the N, and what we're really graphing, the height of the vertical scale is just log Y. The height on the horizontal scale is just log x. Well, I'm going to take the log of both sides of this, and I'm going to use a couple of rules of, of exponent of logs. Log of a product is the sum of the logs, and then that, a log of x to the n, is n log x. That's the horizontal distance. That's the vertical distance. Vertical equals constant plus constant times horizontal. That's very much like y equals mx plus b. It's just that we were graphing log y versus log x, not just x versus y. So, I don't want to berate or belabor that, let's see. I certainly don't want to berate it either. So the slope is equal to the exponent. So let me show you a quick example of using that. Suppose these red dots were some data that I have, and I want to know, is there a power law explanation for that? Is this modeled well by something of the form, let's see if I can do both here, ax to the n? or at least approximately. Now, it's kind of wiggly, so we can say right off the bat, no, not exactly. And that's really cool. That's kind of hard to do unless you're using log log graph paper. You can say no to, to an amazing approximation. Absolutely not. It's not. But we can also slap a ruler on there. And there's more advanced ways to do this with you know straight line fitting and least squares and things like that. But to me, it looks like something like this, roughly, is a pretty good fit. Okay, that's not bad. And then we can at least get 
the exponent, I don't think I'll take the time to nail down the a, but often what we really care about is what kind of power law is this? This is like a square root, a cube, a square, what is it? What is that key sh crucial power? And the cool thing is we can just do that with a ruler, rather like we were doing before. So cross the whole width of this thing, actually let me just be simple, let me just take it to 10 centimeters. 10 centimeters about here. Okay, so the width, the run is 10 centimeters, and the rise, about 2.5. So it looks like we've got something where the run, these markers are getting to where you leave them open for two seconds and they die. Oh, that's not bad. Run is 10 centimeters. The rise is 2.5. And notice, when I do that, I'm not looking at these scales. I'm really looking at the physical run and rise and just taking the geometric slope of that line. That's what was equal to the exponent. And the slope is rise over run, right about a quarter. So this guy is approximately, and not to a great approximation, but uh, as good as data fits usually get, approximately proportional to the one-fourth power of x. And that can be a very, very good thing to know. That can, that can make a scientific paper, just that one observation, can be enough for a paper.